allows you to cross every investigator Lowry at the death. The right Reverend Al Sharpton managed to find his way into the back of the court. I'm guessing he was somehow there at the invitation of the victim's family in this case. And I have nothing personally against Mr. Sharp, but my concern is that it's one thing for the family to be present. It's another thing to ask for the lawyers to be present. But if we're going to start a precedent starting yesterday, we're going to bring high-profile members of the African-American community into the courtroom to sit with the family during the trial in the presence of the jury. I believe that's intimidating, and it's an attempt to pressure. Could be consciously or unconsciously an attempt to, to pressure or influence the jury. My knowledge, Reverend Al Sharpton has no church in Glen County, never has. Hasn't been here since Lane Brown ran for mayor, to my knowledge. But we have all kinds of people. We have school board members. We have county commissioners. We have all kinds of pastors in this state. Over 100. Uh, and the idea that we're going to be serially bringing these people in to sit with the victim's family one after another, obviously there's only so many pastors they can have. And if that, their pastor's Al Sharpton right now, that's fine. But then that's it. We don't want any more black pastors coming in here. Or other, Jesse Jackson, whoever was in, was in here earlier this week, sitting with the victim's family, trying to influence a jury in this case. And I'm not saying the state is even aware that Mr. Sharpton was in the courtroom. I certainly wasn't aware of it until last night. But I think the court can understand my concern uh, about bringing people in who really don't have any ties to this case other than political interests. And, you know, we want to keep politics out of this case. So I'm asking the court to take appropriate steps to make sure that the gallery, which is already limited in this case, isn't being utilized for a purpose that could be viewed as improper. Courtroom and I have no idea how the Reverend Al Sharpton appeared to me. Um, so the state had no part in that whatsoever. So the state is unaware of how that occurred or how he came to be either the family. If a bunch of folks came in here dressed like Colonel Sanders with white masks sitting in the back, I mean, that would be good. So let me tell you what I have heard at lunchtime. And I, what I heard yesterday before lunch is that there was going to be um, Reverend Al Sharpton was going to be appearing on the courthouse, uh, and appearing with the family. Uh, I was asked at lunch whether the court had any objection to um, Reverend Al Sharpton coming into the courtroom. I said, as a member of the public, uh, there are certain limitations on what we can do here. What is going on? And what I was told was instead of having someone from the family sitting in the courtroom, that he was going to be sitting there instead of somebody else from the family. And my comment to that was simply, as long as things are not disrupted and it's not a distraction to the jury or anything else going on in the courtroom, so be it. Well, I will tell you that I noticed him once and that was it. And the fact that nobody else even noticed that he was in here means that everybody complied with this court's rulings on sitting in this courtroom and listening to the evidence. I don't hear a motion, and I will tell you this, I'm not going to blanketly exclude members of the public from this courtroom. Um, if individuals, based on the limitations that we have in the courtroom, um, end up sitting in the courtroom and they can do so, respectful of the court's process and in compliance with this court's orders with regard to the conduct of the trial, and they're not a distraction, then I'm not going to do anything about it. And I did not hear from anyone that there was any distraction whatsoever. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to ask you humbly, have you ever heard such a racist, 
pompous, arrogant individual in your life. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Before we go there, is there anybody that wants to disagree with me now that says that we have to live with psychopaths? Narcissistic psychopaths. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family, whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on. Let me welcome you to the mental house. What I opened up with was an attorney for one of the killers of Ahmaud Arbery. The attorney don't think that no black pastor should be in the courtroom. He think it's black overkill. Um, and he don't want none of these high profile Negroes up in this courtroom because it may influence and intimidate I'm sorry, intimidate the jury or anybody else. Ladies and gentlemen, the more we look at this, the more specifically black people, the, the more we should have, we should pay homage to our ancestors every single day. And they had to live with white people that weren't so developed, supposedly, as these so-called white people that we live with today. The, the white people back then were supposed to be so underdeveloped, remember? Because they always tell you that was a long time ago. What in freaking Sam's tarnation did I really hear? Did I actually hear a man try to take his racist ass and he took his racist ass and stood up and actually asked the judge, could he keep niggers out of the goddamn courtroom? These people just killed somebody. Three white men just killed a black unarmed man that was jogging. And he's worried about We can't keep living around these people. These people are psychotic. And the ones that ain't, they got to stand up and make themselves known. Stand up and be counted. Who is on the Lord's side? Because that shit there, <laughs> even the other attorneys at the desk was like, what the fuck is he just saying? Oh, ancestors, blacker than a thousand midnights. <laughs> we honor you. We honor you. Because if I know if it wasn't for y'all and the sacrifices and all the abuse that y'all would went through, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Because your will to stay alive was greater than anything that those devils threw at you. But I'm here to say today in 2021, we can't go backwards, family. We can't go backwards. We cannot go backwards, family. I'm very insulted that the judge didn't straight up tell him, do you realize I cannot put, I don't want to, I cannot exclude people because of the color of their skin? How come the judge didn't flat out say that? You see how they protect their own. Now, even though he so-called admonished him, like he so-called said was crazy that it was an all-white jury. Oh, minus one black guy. But he didn't do nothing about it. He let it go on. This is crazy. Black people can't keep putting up with this crazy shit. We can't keep putting up with this. They are trying to pile on top of pile on top. They're trying to break your spirit down into the ground. But I tend to say that your spirit should be getting stronger and stronger every day. Let your ancestors breathe through you. Let the ancestor breathe through you. Whether your ancestors were the descendants of John Brown. Viola Luso, 
or anybody else that fought for freedom. Let the blood and the life force of your ancestors shine through you right now. Don't let your spirit get broke. Because these are demonic energies. These people are demons. This mindset that we're looking at ain't nothing but the work of the devil. I challenge anybody to tell me that it ain't. Who the fuck do y'all think y'all are? And what make you think even a cat scratch back when you keep poking at it and poking at it and poke? What the f Y'all are sick. Every person that agree with there shouldn't be no black people in that courtroom, you are insane. No sane and rational person would even fix their mouth to say nothing that damn stupid. You are racist. The town that you have in the, 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 the trial in, I heard it's 55% black. How you come up with an all-white jury? Y'all need to quit. The jig is up, white man. You you had 6,000 years to rule. And you didn't do a very good job. All you did was create divisions. You raped, you robbed, and you pillaged humanity. And your jig is up. Your numbers are down. And you are trying to do anything you can to hold on to the power that you are losing. If you think that that's going to be your best and that's what's going to resolve the issue and you're going to keep on going back in terms of race relations, I got news for you. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. With that being said, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. I'll see you in the next video.